to borrow a line from the Hunger Games, may the odds forever be in Tampa Bay's favor. A team that takes a 2-0 lead in a best of seven series goes on to win that series 86% of the time. Definitely good news if you're a Bolts fan. Uh, the Lightning landed here in Detroit this afternoon, got to their hotel just over an hour ago. News Channel 8 was there to see the Bolts get off the bus. Steven Stamkos did not fly out with the team, but defenseman Anton Strollman did. That broken leg recovering nicely. Strollman even carrying a bag on his right side. Game three against the Red Wings set for tomorrow night right here at Joe Louis Arena. Will there be more rough stuff, more shenanigans? Can the Bolts take a commanding 3-0 lead? Predict at your peril. Clearly I'm not the guy to ask because I think I said after game one all that rough stuff and it was not going to happen in game two and uh, clearly wrong so I'm not so sure what's going to happen. I expect it to be just like games one and two. I mean it, it's playoff hockey it's do or die every single night and um, you know everyone's going to be working their absolute tail off try to win and uh, you know we, we need that next one they need it as well so it's going to be a good one. If Tyler Johnson tells you it's going to be a good one, it's going to be a good one. He's been the guy to follow so far this series. Six points in just two games, maybe a few more on tap tomorrow, Mel. Center ice here at Joe Louis Arena is usually emblazoned with the word hockey town, but not this year. This year, Detroit is celebrating its 25th consecutive playoff appearance. An impressive feat, but if the Bolts have their way, the Red Wings will be exiting the postseason in the first round for the fourth time in the last five years. Obviously, we're down 0-2. Uh, they, they took care of uh, their home ice, and now we're here at the Joe and looking forward to uh, playing here where, it, you know, it's going to be a great environment. It's just a tough building to play in. For whatever reason, they play well there, and uh, they got some crazy fans. They've been around, you know, forever. So, original six team, and it's a legendary building. It's just, it's a tough, tough building to play in. The Lightning and Red Wings have met six times this season. So far, the home team has won each game. Will that streak be snapped in game three? If the series has taught us anything, it's to predict at your own peril. I expect it to be just like games one and two. I mean, it, it's playoff hockey, it's do or die every single night. And, um, you know, everyone's going to be working their absolute tail off, try to win. And, uh, you know, we, we need that next one. They need it as well. So it's going to be a good one. Clearly, I'm not the guy to ask because I think I said after game one all that rough stuff and it was not going to happen in game two and uh, clearly wrong so I'm not so sure what's going to happen. Reporting from Joe Louis Arena, Paul Ryan, News Channel 8 Sports. Paul Ryan is live at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. And Paul, both teams have a little lineup news heading into tonight's game you want to share with us. Yeah, that's right, Dan. As this series shifts to Motown, the lineup has shifted on both sides. As we reported yesterday, uh, JT Brown is going to miss the remainder of the series after blocking the shot. Eric Condra will take his spot in the lineup tonight, playing fourth line minutes alongside Brian Boyle and uh, his, his cohort, uh, Mr. Mike Blunden, who got pretty bloodied up at the end of game two. Uh, the changes for the Red Wings, though, are much more drastic, starting with a change in goal. On the return flight from Tampa, Jimmy Howard was told he would not be starting game three. Now, that opens the door for Peter Mrazek, who was Detroit starter to begin the season, but hasn't been able to stop a beach ball with a tennis racket lately. That said, the Lightning aren't entering tonight's game with any different plan of attack. We still want to generate the chances that we're generating. You know, no goalie really likes having traffic in front of him. And if you can get a screen on a goalie, uh, it's it's tough tough to save the puck. So those are something that, those are staples that we want to continue to do. It, it seems like he fights for pucks a little harder than Howard, but um, uh, he's a great goalie. He, last year in the playoffs, he, he played really well. So we expect the same tonight. We've actually played against Mrazek more than we've probably seen Howard. So um, regardless who they have in goal, it doesn't change our mindset of how we've got to play when you got to get. When you get the chance, you got to shoot the puck by him, and uh, that's it. Another thing to watch out for tonight, a little more of the rough stuff. The Bolts and Wings have shown they are absolutely sick of each other, as evidenced by that line brawl at the end of Game 2. The guy that got the worst of that altercation, aforementioned Mike Blunden, was laughing about it in practice this morning. I asked him if he realized just how bloody he became in that Donnie Brook. Yeah. I didn't know I was that bloody until I got to the back room, but everyone's just trying to get in and get a guy. Just uh, you don't want anyone being two on one or anything like that. So uh, stuff happens. Uh, you know, you wear visor, protect your eyes, and it's just unfortunate it cut, it cut my mouth open. 
Pretty tough customer right there, Dan. You know who else is a pretty tough customer? Defenseman Anton Strawman, who we showed you yesterday, made the trip to Detroit. The Lightning have officially ruled him out for the rest of the series, but during practice this morning, he was just pounding it on the exercise bike. Coach Cooper optimistic he could return if the Bolts advance to the second round, Dan. A welcome to Detroit, Michigan, the birthplace of the combustion engine and home to a hockey team that hasn't missed a postseason in 25 years. Let's have a look around the show. We are less than 40 minutes away from puck drop game three of this best of seven series if recent history is any indication the bolts aren't the favorites tonight these two teams have met six times this season and the home team has won all six but that doesn't take into account just how impressive the lightning have looked in game one and two that new top line of johnson Kalorn, and kucherov led tampa bay to a 2-0 series lead now the lightning practiced this morning right here at the joe and the mood was light spirits were high just like they've been since the postseason began this team feels no pressure in a pressure cooker of a situation and maybe that's that's why the bolts are winning. Loose is a term that's been thrown around, but I think we're just we're focused on the task at hand. We we're preparing for a difficult game against a hungry team that's going to play with hard. Coop doesn't want a team that's I don't know if uptight's the right word, but we're just loose. Um, and I think that uh, you know that fosters good play. Obviously, you know they're going to come hard, and uh, we just got to be ready for that. And you know just stick to the structure. Both the Lightning and the Red Wings made some changes to their roster tonight, including a goaltending switch for Detroit. Peter Morazic will get the start. Jimmy Howard sent to the bench. I'll have more on that, plus update you on the changes for the Bolts a little later in sports. Mel? Yeah, just too many penalty minutes tonight. Uh, I think the Lightning are very obviously a better five-on-five -five hockey team than the Red Wings are, but this game wasn't played five-on-five -five tonight. Uh, Detroit, seven power plays in this one. Now, granted, they went 0 for 7 because Detroit's power play has been abysmal for a while. Lightning went 0 for 3 on a power play, but you talk about 10 different power plays in this game. Not a lot of even-strength hockey being played, and, and, and the other thing the Red Wings did really well tonight, Dan, was taking away space for the Lightning. There was just no room in the neutral zone at any point, and I think that evidenced itself in the shot totals at the end of the game. Uh, the Lightning only three shots in the second period, just four shots in the third period. You're talking about a two-goal game here. The Bolts with the game on the line, chance to go up 3-0 in the third, and you muster four shots. And the last two were in the, in the flurry there at the end of the game. You know, it, just the effort wasn't there, but a lot of that had to do with the way Detroit defended and uh, took away that neutral zone space. 60 minutes of penalties tonight, 32 of them in that skirmish at the end of the game. I guess it's only fitting in an arena named after a boxer in Joe Lewis that another game would end with a scrap at the end, Dan, those shenanigans that you're talking about. But I think Cooper hit the nail on the head there. Nobody scored on the power play in this game, but the fact that the Lightning were shorthanded so much, it gasses the guys they rely upon to score goals or to play defense. Victor Hedman spent a ton of time just killing penalties tonight, mm. and that's not the way the Bolts want to play if they're uh, going to win hockey games, Dan. Here, let's talk about Mrazek for a little bit here, Dan. Uh, Mrazek was the starter to start the year. He won the job over Jimmy Howard in the postseason last year and played pretty darn well against the Lightning. And then he lost it with some inconsistent play. Jimmy Howard took the starter role back. Coming into the playoffs, Peter Mrazek got hold in something like four of his last six games that he played in. Hmm. I mean, that's unheard of in today's NHL. You think this guy's riding the pine, uh, but he comes in tonight. He didn't have to be spectacular because the defense was so good in front of him. Uh, we need to talk about the penalties one more time, Dan, and I think we should go back to the first period for just a minute here because the Lightning had an opportunity to seize in that first period. They killed off a five-on-three. Detroit was, an ab it was abysmal on this five-on-three opportunity, and the Lightning got to the locker room tied 0-0, but then they undid that work by taking those dumb penalties in the second and third period and getting themselves behind the eight ball and never had an opportunity to really come back in this game. This is something the coach was not pleased about tonight. He wasn't pleased about much, uh, Paul, but uh, penalties still the big theme tonight. Yeah, just undisciplined behavior. It, it's the penalties that happen in the flow of a hockey game, Dan, that I think everyone is okay with on both sides of the ledger. Guys fighting for an, a loose puck, guys scrapping in the corners, whatever. There were a couple penalties that were real backbreakers in this game. Uh, the Colburn one at the end of the game is the one that really stood out to me, Dan. Uh, you know, you had a chance with Bishop pulled down 2 nothing. Maybe you get a, a fluky bounce, and it's a, it's a one-shot hockey game at that point. And Colburn loses his cool and takes a penalty and puts the bolts shorthanded again. And I get it from the fans that are unhappy with the way that the game is officiated. And I think that a lot of times the Red Wings fans were unhappy about some of the calls too. But you have to fight through that stuff. And, and you can't end up in a spot where you're costing your team by taking penalties. Paul, uh, now what for the Bulls? This was heartbreaking tonight.
Well, the bottom line, Mel, is that we've got ourselves a series here. I don't think anyone in this building thought that it would be any different coming into Game 3. You know, Game 1 in Detroit, they say it's not actually a series until a team wins on the road. And so far, these teams have faced off seven times this season, and none of them have won on the road. And right now, we're in downtown Detroit, just outside of Joe Louis Arena on Steve Eiserman Drive, as if there was any better place to talk about the Bolts and Red Wings series. Both teams practiced inside the arena this morning. Almost the entirety of today's practice was spent working on the power play and penalty kill for the Lightning. Uh, Ryan Callahan, Ben Bishop, and Cedric Paquette given the day off. And with Callahan out of the lineup, that meant Jonathan Duran jumped up to that first power play unit, skating with Johnson, Boyle, Kucherov, and Hedman. You may remember last night the Bulls went 0 for 3 with the man advantage, but we're still able to kill off seven Red Wing power plays. Someone's got to score with the man advantage eventually, and that may turn out to be a key in this series. We switched units up uh, before the last game, so I think uh, it's just kind of get familiar with each other and, um, you know, just get our plays down, try to get some repetitions, and um, that way it's not so much thinking, just doing. Our power play hasn't been as, as good as we liked. Our penalty kill has been uh, doing a pretty good job, so uh, when games are so close, it's, it's important that your special teams are working, so uh, that was the main thing today. Special teams have not really come into play in this series so far. Um, which is a little surprising because I'm sure our series is leading the NHL in penalties. You know, as these games go on, you, you, you need to score that power play goal, and this was a chance to work on it, and we did. Coach Cooper was right about that assertion, Dan. 215 penalty minutes in this series. That's almost 40% of the entire total of every NHL playoff series right now. Hey there, Jen. I'll be honest with you. It's a little weird standing here in Joe Louis Arena in Detroit without 20,000 maniacs dressed in red screaming at the top of their lungs. That was the case in Game 3 last night. By the Red Wings count, by the way, 13 octopi hit that ice surface last night over the course of the game. Uh, pretty crazy and, and smelly for the people that had to strap them to their legs and bring them in. Earlier this afternoon, the Lightning were on that ice. No octopi. <laughs> Ryan Callahan, Ben Bishop, Cedric Paquette given the day off. They did not skate resting up for tomorrow's Game 4. Everyone else was on the ice this morning, though, including third-string goalie Christos Gudlevskis already with the Lightning since he wasn't slated to play for the Syracuse Crunch tonight. The rest of the Black Aces set to join the team shortly, but for now the focus is on the NHLers trying to reboot after last night's 2-0 loss to the Red Wings. The mindset today is just get the body moving. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about our game yesterday. Uh, really not much to talk about, though. We all know how we play. We all know what we have to do. So um, it's just a matter of uh, getting that mentality of, you know, it's do or die every single night, and we got to get that for tomorrow. Playback games one through seven last year, and you can see it's the exact same thing that's happened this time. Sometimes you get open ice, and you have to take advantage of it, and most of the time you don't have it. And it's the team that gets the most open ice usually is the team that comes out on top. Almost the entirety of today's practice was spent working on the power play and penalty kill. Jonathan Drouin skating on the top unit alongside Tyler Johnson, Brian Boyle, Nikita Kucherov, and Victor Hedman. The Bolts went 0-3 for 3 last night with the man advantage, but were able to kill off seven Red Wings penalties. Uh, someone has to score on the power play eventually, and that might turn out to be the key in this series. We switched units up uh, before the last game, so I think uh, it's just kind of get familiar with each other and, um, you know, just get our plays down, try to get some repetitions, and um, that way it's not so much thinking, just doing. Our power play hasn't been as, as good as we liked. Our penalty kill has been uh, doing a pretty good job, so uh, when games are so close, it's, it's important that your special teams are working, so uh, that was the main thing today. Special teams have not really come into play in this series so far. Um, which is a little surprising because I'm sure our series is leading the NHL in penalties. You know, as these games go on, you, you, you need to score that power play goal, and this was a chance to work on it, and we did. Coach Cooper was actually correct with his assertion that there were more penalty minutes in this series than any other. We just looked it up a minute ago. The Lightning and Red Wings have accounted for over 40% of all the penalty minutes in the NHL playoffs so far. Uh, definitely a wild one. It seems like every single game ends in a, a Donnybrook of some sort. I guess that's fitting in Joe Louis Arena, the, the Detroit rink here named after a famous boxer, Jen. Well, Paul, we've seen a lot of rough stuff in the first three games. Are you anticipating that's going to continue in game yeah. four? 
Yeah, I really do, honestly. I think that you're going to see more of that. Uh, these two teams just hate each other at this point. I mean, they played each other in the first round last year. They played each other four times during the regular season. The Wings don't like the Bolts and vice versa. Now, we never used to see fighting during the playoffs. Not anymore, though. As Paul Ryan joins us live from the gorgeous Riverwalk in Detroit. He has a view of Ontario on the other side. There he is and uh, has got his passport ready. There is a reason, Paul, that this stuff is allowed to fester. Yes, Dan, I've got the enhanced driver's license. I don't need the passport. Ontario might be the only refuge for the referees in this series by the time it's over. It's commonly understood that the officials call the game a little differently during the postseason than they do in the regular season. But that discrepancy might end up making a huge difference in this series. And on one knee, he now gets the bad news. It's a trip to the box again. Through three games, the Lightning and Red Wings have accounted for 215 penalty minutes. That's nearly 40% of all the penalty minutes in every NHL playoff series. Clearly, both teams need to spend a little less time in here. But what about the guys that put him in there? Does anyone feel bad for the referees? Do I empathize for the referees? Uh, I respect the referees. That's a tough job. They ref 82 games a year. 82 times they're being booed every single night. They don't have a home crowd. And Brendan Smith going at it now with Hedman. You gotta get somebody else over there. The whole bench is there. He's by himself. Whether or not the officials are calling the game fairly is one thing. Player safety is another. When every game ends in a Donnybrook, is there any fault that lies with the referees if someone gets seriously hurt? Are they breaking those scrums up quickly enough? I think they're doing the best they can to break it up. It's obviously a tough, tough, tough to do that. There's only four of them, right? So to break those things up quickly, it's, it's tough. You want to pick um, certain players to break up. But I mean, I don't think last night anything I don't think it got too out of control. I mean, the night before or at home, it seemed like it got a little out of control, but last night didn't seem too bad. I've never been a ref before or anything like that, so I, I can't honestly say how you know tough that is. Um, you know, I, there's some things that I think you just can't control, and um, you know, the playoffs is a lot of emotion, a lot of things going on. The Lightning and Red Wings have become fast rivals over the last two seasons, Dan, but there's one thing that Tampa Bay and Detroit can agree upon. It's that everyone hates the officials. Nobody likes them or the job that they're doing. And coming up in sports, I don't want to be a chicken, I don't want to be a duck, and I don't want to be in the penalty box either. We're talking about the Zebras. How have the referees influenced the series between the Red Wings and Bolts, and could they be doing more? We're about a 20-hour drive from Tampa to Detroit, Michigan, but that doesn't mean there aren't Lightning fans sitting here right on the glass at Joe Louis Arena. Take a look at the sign there. That took some effort, some arts and craftsy stuff. Uh, what brings you to the Joe? Um, well, we're huge Tampa Bay fans. We had season tickets like two years ago, and now we're like loyal to our team, so that's why we're here. And I heard that you used to live in Tampa, but you've defected to Detroit. What made you move up here? Uh, actually, she got accepted in U of M and Arbor. I cried, but we have to move. But we come every time Tampa Bay plays here. Obviously, your allegiances are still with the Lightning, not with the Red Wings, right? Of course. I mean, we love we love Tampa. We still have a lot of uh, fans. Actually, we are connect, and the Chief. We always uh, connect with the Chief. Okay, what makes you love the Lightning so much? They're just a great organization. Like when we lived there, it was like easy to meet the players. Um, they had like the radio show after all the games, and you can meet them at McDonald's. So that's how we got like a lot of these signatures. So they actually care about the, they care about the fans. So that's that's why. I'm... Can we get a cheer real quick? Yeah. Go ahead. Let's go Bolts! Let's go Bolts! Let's go Bolts! Paul Ryan is live inside Joe Louis Arena for Game Four, big one. He's not doing the chicken dance, but uh, still going to be a fun night, Paul. <laughs> I just saw a sign down there, Dan, that said, Brian Boyle drives a Prius. At least the Red Wing fans are getting creative. We're cutting down to puck drop just over a half an hour away from the start of game four. I want to show you something real quick. The Wings printed up 22,000 of these towels to commemorate their 25th consecutive playoff appearance. You see this at the top? Nine teams didn't exist when that streak started. The Tampa Bay Lightning among them, although if you don't like the towel, you can use it as a bib if you wanted to eat some wings later tonight. Uh, the Lightning very much in existence this morning. They were out at the skate here at Joe Louis Arena. Cedric Paquette and Nikita Kucherov were there for the skate after resting yesterday.
yesterday. And there are eight first round playoff series going on right now. This one was the most penalized by far. So it only makes sense that eventually special teams would make a huge impact. But you may have noticed there was no Donnie Brook at the end of this one. Everyone kept their gloves on. Uh, that's because NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman was in the building. You don't want to spook the commish. When, when the principal's in class, Dan, you don't shoot spit wads. Ah, uh, he had some suspensions ready to hand out if anybody got out of line. Paul, thank you very much. <laughs> Happy travels uh, back to Tampa. We'll see you Thursday night. Dan, we've been covering the Lightning all season. I've never seen them work so hard on the power play and penalty kill. We stood in here and watched them do this for over a half an hour. First with no defenseman, and then they brought the defenseman in. And that first Kucherov goal, we saw that scored three different ways yesterday in this arena. And then just like that, it happened in real life. That 30 minutes plus of practice finally making perfect. Yeah, I felt about like five hours, but I guess it was only 30 minutes. Uh... Thanks to their 3-2 win over the Red Wings last night, the Tampa Bay Lightning take a commanding 3-1 lead in the best of seven series, and the Bolts are presented with a golden opportunity, the chance to end the series Thursday in Tampa and not have to take another face-off on Joe Louis Arena ice for at least a few months.